Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Zubair Alvi and inshallah I'll be one of the guides with you with Dome Tours this year. And the purpose of this video is to try and give you a few tips to prepare you for your Hajj from before you go and of course when you're there at the house of Allah. So the first thing that I would say is that the whole point of Hajj is to make a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called you as you are and he wants you to implore him, make dua, pray as much as you can. And so my first tip would be to make sure that you perfect your prayer. And what do I mean by that? I mean that you go over your prayer again. You make sure that you learn it again if you're finding it difficult uh, in the Arabic. And of course, you'll try and learn it in the English as well because one of the things that you'll find when you're there is when you're trying to make a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing what you're saying in whatever language you understand is the most important thing. So maybe try and sit down with someone to perfect the Arabic. Try and maybe go through the meaning by yourself and really make that connection uh, because that's really one of the main reasons that you're there. Another thing that I would say in terms of uh, tips is that we are going to give you our Dome Tours uh, guidebook, which you might, a lot of you might have already. It's got an amazing, uh, it's a collection of 20 years of experience. And so it's got an amazing section on what to do when you're there in terms of Ibadah. So it goes through tips and different things, a bit of an extension of this video, to be honest. And really it covers things like when you're there, make, making sure you read Quran as much as possible, making sure that you try and attend all the prayers if you're able to do that. But one of the important things that I've noticed from experience is that just being in the presence of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is so much. And there's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in which he said that there are a number of mercies that come down from heaven to the people who are bowing and prostrating and um, reading Quran in the, in the region or around the Kaaba and even looking at the Kaaba uh, brings reward. So that's something that you want to try and do when you're there. Um, we have with our group a number of scholars which will again help you. They're going to be with you the entire time through the Hajj period. We have Sheikh Zakaria who speaks Arabic, French, a bit of English. His English has to be better than my French. You have Sheikh Samir who speaks English and Arabic of course. You have Sheikh Amr Jamil from Glasgow who again speaks uh, Urdu, Punjabi, um, Arabic, English. Uh, you have uh, sisters and sheikhs, our sheikhs. Um, Sister Manal and Sister Batul who will be there as well. So you're covered in terms of having any of your questions answered as well. So if you have anything that you need to ask, the scholars will be there through the entire journey with you. So in terms of preparing before you go, I would suggest do some reading. Um, what you want to do is try and get a few books. So in addition, in addition to the guidebook, which is full of uh, some really good tips and information, what you want to do is try and maybe get a feel for the whole of the Hajj experience. So some of the books that I would recommend, for example, are Al-Ghazali's Inner Dimensions of Islamic Worship, which has got a section on the Hajj itself. It gives real meaning to everything that you'll be doing. Uh, another one is, for example, Martin Ling's uh, Muhammad. It's one of the best uh, books in English on the seerah of the Prophet And there are many, many other books. But don't get bogged down too much because remember, Hajj is not an exam. You're not cramming for anything. What you're doing is preparing yourself to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called you anyway. Uh, so the idea is to get there as you are. It's not an exam. Don't spend hours just sitting there trying to memorize Quran and memorize du'as and memorize. No, what I mean is just to take it easy, try and do as much as you can. Um, perfect your prayer, of course, and your Arabic when you're reciting Quran. And learn a few du'as, but don't get too stressed about what I'm going to do and stuff like that. Because remember, you're in very good hands. Dome Tours, mashallah, have got years and years, 20 years of experience when it comes to taking people to Hajj. Uh, let us take care of everything else. Um, going to Mecca, traveling there, your, where you're staying, accommodation, transport. Let us take care of everything and you guys just focus on your ibadah. So these are the kind of things that you want to be reading. Another book that I just remember, in fact, is The A Thousand Roads to Mecca, I think it's called by Michael Wolfe. It's a fantastic logs of people who over the last 1400 years have experienced Hajj. So you're talking about Ibn Jubair, you take Ibn Battuta, it goes to Lady Evelyn Cobalt from Scotland who went to Hajj in the 1930s. You have um, other experiences, Malcolm X for example is in there as well. So that's a really good way, uh, which is not religious reading as such, but it's a good way to try and get a feel for the whole uh, experience. Uh, and then you can of course write about your own experience when you get back. So the thing that you have to have the most of is patience. 
patience in dealing with the people that are around you. I mean, Mecca is a city after all, it's very busy and of course at Hajj you're looking at an excess of 3 million people. It's never going to be easy, but then the reward for Hajj, for an accepted Hajj is forgiveness in paradise. In fact, the Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith that the only reward for an accepted Hajj is paradise. And this is, inshallah, what we are going to try and facilitate for you uh, as part of the, the Dome Tours Hajj. So just to conclude, the last thing that we want to finish on is I remember one of our Hajj guides uh, told a group last year, he was saying that Hajj is an invitation to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is inviting you to his house. And you know, as Muslims, you know, as people who have guests come to their house, no one invites someone to their house without being hospitable towards them and without giving them everything that they can. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is no different. He's not going to invite you all the way to his house to send you back empty handed. So we pray that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accepts our Hajj. We pray that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala makes it easy for us and helps us make the most of it. And we pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that he gives us forgiveness and that he brings us closer to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And to conclude, وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ لَا خَيْرِ خَلْكِهِ مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَىٰ عَلِهِ وَسَعْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ بِرَحْ